Nowhere to run, Marie. Nowhere to hide, Marie. Everything has been consumed, even your house. Now you will be assimilated into my nachos. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Splatoon 2. Last time, we uh, laughably could do something that was described as sniping. Yeah, we can't even use our bombs to uh, take care of her. And I know I didn't kill her in the whole area. Okay, there have been budget cuts. This time, we continue on to a new land in Octo Canyon, Suction Cup Lookout. Let's have a fun new adventure in a brand new way you never imagined. Right away, big open place. Lots of exploring to do. We have our usual orange balloons that'll cough up one egg. You have to wonder if the balloon is the egg, just uh, incredibly overstretched. I mean, parts of the body can be stretched and squashed quite a lot, actually. Come on, where are you? Uh, I need to find a level, need to find a level. I'm probably gonna find them in a pretty non-linear order, not going in the intended order a whole lot. I'm just gonna try to find an area and go to it. Anything over here? I can climb up these. I can't climb up that wall. That's uninkable. That's got a lip on top of it. I would just bonk my head there. This, on the other hand, looks more promising. Ah, no, 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 no! It's okay. I needed to uh, check those boxes. The type of box that never contains anything. Yeah, those. Stage five. The Octo Park. Stay on your grind. I was right. It is this level. Yes. Oh, hi! Little drone flying by. Are you gonna prime air delivery selling to me? Yes! Okay, take this with you. It'll help me gather some practical data. These are the hottest weapons in the game right now, the hero dualies. Press B while shooting and move in any direction to do a slick dodge roll. You can dodge roll forward, backward, or side to side. It's totally raw, yo! The hero dualies, a new weapon class for us. I want you to keep these in mind. You can do this twice in a row. You can see I dodge rolled right into this ink rail that automatically moves us forward. That's why it's got some divisions in it and why it looks all choppy-like. Anyone like that will always forcibly move you forward. We'll jump off of that, do a sick trick, yo! And then we'll go on up through the fried ring, shoot heads below, jump up, and land. Nice. This level is surprisingly a big part of my Splatoon 2 experience. I know, right? Let me explain. So I was selected to receive a copy of this game early. Um, Nintendo was kind enough to send me a copy about a month before the official release, as you've seen in the beginning of these videos. They don't have any input on my opinions in these videos, by the way, just in case that was worried about. But uh, when I had the game early, there were appointed times where there were people online to play with. Obviously, the servers were not that populated at that point. And because I really wanted to play this new game, uh, but there weren't always people to play the multiplayer with, I ended up doing a lot in uh, Octo Canyon and made a lot of progress in it before the game had officially released. This was the level that I kept coming back to again and again, trying to get faster and faster times. And I just loved going through it, seeing how fast I completed it, how, how many optimizations I could do to keep the momentum going. It was so fun. Yeah, I spent more time here than I probably did in any map for a while. That right there, okay, now you're just showing up. All for you, Marie, all for you. You are not impressed in the slightest because I did not know who you were. You know, I'm kind of glad that Emil is the powerful one and not Joe out of our two Inklings here because I don't think I can really get behind somebody as the hero of the story if they've never heard of Marie. Come on, you can't be doing that. Uh, I'm gonna pull out my curling bombs here. I haven't been utilizing those like I should. Uh, as a hot tip, uh, curling bombs are useful for mobility, of course, as you've seen already. Uh, but, uh, can I, no, okay, I'm gonna need to go around. What I wanted to show is that if you just wanna use bombs willy-nilly, uh, you can switch. Let me get ink first, okay. You can switch back and forth between bombs to mitigate the downtime in between them as long as you have the ink for it. It's a little difficult to do with this example, but trust me, it is something that you can do. And also, I didn't break that, and that was the main reason I came over here, okay. That, uh, that takes me to a new place. I don't want to go there quite yet, so let's just do this. Break all that open, get some armor. Take that. And then fast fall, woo! This level is just so sick. Sometimes I wish I was the one risking my life out there. Yeah, you better. Up to the side, let's break that open. And 
for staying on the side, I get rewarded with more power eggs. Yet I can never truly collect them all. I remember situations like that always upset me. Get the Sardinium. That fish must be close. Already, I was having so much fun. Keeping the movement going and just never losing your momentum this whole level is what makes it so great. It's the epitome of a fun speedrunning level. That is, oh, we get one last area. Okay, good, good, all right. Press B while shooting on the move to do an outro. Yes, Sheldon, we know. Going up, uh, hit that, hit you, hit you, hit you. I can stop in place a little bit, woo! Get the sunken scroll right at the very end. Hop on the rail. Down you go. No, not me. Up we go. Man, I was that close to it. That's just disappointing. Uh, let's launch the curling bomb. Uh, launch the launch the curling bomb. I swear I've speed run to this level before, guys. Do you see that? How there was a hero shot that was, yeah, weapon log. Yeah. There is something tracking which weapons you've completed which levels with. Uh, and then more data, you get me the more quicker I can finalize my retail version, so keep it up. But remember, this is just a loner. I'm not running a charity here. Good luck, Agent 4. We can now press plus to change weapons. You can upgrade your weapons at the Ammo Knights Enhancifier with some Sardinium and Power Eggs. Try showing this to Krusty Sean while you're in the square. It'll be worth your time. That ticket that we picked up uh, has a purpose. Oh, and that's one of those tickets you can use at Krusty Sean's place. You can find his food truck parked in Inkopolis Square. He sells the most amazing fried uh, hot dog thing. Man, I could really go for a hot dog right now. <laughs> Yet another Splatoon 1 reference. There was a hot dog Splatfest team and Marie was the leader of it. This looks like a get-rich-quick scheme by some shady guy with crazy hair. I made a cool 10 million G in a year just by sitting around. Ask me how. Do people really fall for this bilge? With our food ticket. Oh, we can also bring up the map with X and go between sectors. With this food ticket by our side, we got a new important topic to go over. Let's head on back to Ingopolis Square. Turning right around. Aww. Cats do ex. Your build disgusts me, but I'll give you a fresh anyway. Krusty Sean. Krusty Sean. The piss is Krusty Sean. We're gonna grab a bite or several. What's cracking? Krusty Sean has shoes all over his limbs that he is using to handle food. Um, perhaps not the best profession to jump between as he was a shoe salesman back in Splatoon 1 and is now running a food truck without changing the fact that he's handling all this food with the bottoms of his sneakers. This food truck, known as the Krusty Bucket, has food items that we can get from tickets in Octo Canyon. These will boost cash by 50%, doubled or 150%, while these increase experience, uh, battle experience by 50%, double or 150%. They're rather good items, and besides Octo Canyon, can only be earned through Salmon Run. Popping one of these and making sure that you're in the effective one at all times, it can't really hurt you, and, you know, only one may be active at a time, but still. And we also have drink menus. These are tickets that can be exchanged for drinks that will increase the chances of getting certain abilities on gear that you are leveling up. We have three tickets here for special charge up, some for, I actually have quite a lot here. I didn't think I had any, any of these left because I already have a lot of the gear that I wanted. Some of these are more useful than others. Obviously main power up would probably be the one that I'd recommend stacking the most. Whereas blast armor Picoco, these all have names. Oh my God, I've never actually looked at these before. Um, I wouldn't really recommend stacking that ability because one or two sub slots would be for the best. Same thing goes for quick jump orange. Short respawn mocha, special oh. up smoothie, power, special saver latte, special up shake, ink shoe grape. It, do I want to know how you make that? Do you actually crush it with the shoes on your hands? Anyway, I've already told you about brand affinity and how certain clothing brands will favor certain abilities. You might think that these drinks stack with the brand affinity, and I've seen some guides even claim that they do, but they do not. But that's okay, because the chances from drinks are greater than the chances from brand affinity anyway. The chances of rolling an ability without any kind of boost is 5.7% to get the desired ability, 
or a 0.018% chance to get all three slots. With Brand Affinity, it is a 28.5% chance for one slot, 2.3 for a pure. With a drink ticket, it's 30% for one slot or 2.7% for a pure. Like everything else, there's always little detail, so let's see those. Krusty Sean is a Squid Sisters fan having a windshield cover on his van of them when he's at work. If we go into first person mode, we can see that uh, he is a fan of Turquoise October. They're the band that plays the music heard in Octo Canyon. It's kind of sort of pseudonyms for the composers. So now that we got all that done, we're ready to get ready for some battles. Our special topic was thematic with what we were doing today. And uh, our weapon is as well. You look so funky fresh, girl. I love the rainbow colored gems on your face together with the coat and the shoes. God, you look so cool. Okay, maybe I'm laying it on a little bit thick. Happy birthday, Aggie! Let's learn about the weapon of the day, which is also thematic with what we did in Octo Canyon. All right, here you go, the Splat Dooleys. This is the one a lot of you have been waiting for because it's probably been killing you a ton and looking super cool every time it does. The Dooleys have decent range, great movement stats, hit for 30 damage, and possesses good ink economy to let it keep shooting and moving for long periods of time. 30 is a good damage number as it's exactly enough to destroy ink armor in one shot. Pairs of guns have wildly different shooting and movement options from all other weapon classes, so let's get into how they reinvent the wheel first. Ink is sprayed from both the right and left hands, and the shots land at two separate reticles. To complement one another, the guns are pointed inward so the bullets are near touching at their effective range meeting at a vanishing point, versus most guns that shoot straight ahead. This isn't a bad thing and often won't be noticed, but it can matter when a target is too close and is only getting hit by one gun. One dually's range being obstructed will not affect the other as they are two separate guns through and through. This might sound attractive at first as this means it's one of the few ways to attack left-handed, but the firing rate of one dually by itself is just half of what the continuous fire is meant to be. Dooleys are equipped to overwhelm by moving all around their enemies. To aid in this mission, they feature a dodge roll built in as standard. This is a massive difference as it's a whole new type of movement no other weapon class has access to. This makes the dualies naturally not have to work as hard to outmaneuver in quick duels. Pressing jump while firing executes a dodge roll in the direction of the left stick, but the user can still jump as normal if pressed before firing. The dodge roll has many properties aside from just a mere additional movement. First, it uses 9% of the ink tank to execute because it actually leaves behind ink and lessens the need to shoot the floor in tight spots. It does not require being in ink to move, and it can be used to play the spacing game in situations where swimming is impossible. In the air, the roll functions as a fast fall and can be used for faster approaches or to throw off a foe's timing when they're meaning to shoot you. Once a roll concludes, the roller, uh, wrong terminology, will catch themselves in a crouch and be unable to walk or swim for exactly half a second. Once locked into a crouch, the two reticles become one and shot deviation is disabled. If no direction is pressed, it's allowed to stay in this mode indefinitely. Alternatively, two rolls may be chained together, but movement is forcibly taken away for that half second at the end of the second roll. So it must count and not mindlessly spam just because you feel like you're harder to shoot that way. It's very possible to get a high from how much the game rewards quick dodging and not realize how much ink you're milling through. Watch your back. Literally. Dodge rolls allow super jumping into dicier conditions than normal. This is absolutely a constant threat that spends very little time away from combat thanks to that one change. Paired guns get the advantage against slower, more powerful attacks. The key is to bait an attack out of a slow attacker and leave it wide open. Get used to how the fire needs to be led and have them in the crosshairs when they're still reacting to the dodge. In the way of uses and strategies for the main weapon, a lot of this was gone over in just explaining how the mechanics work. The guns themselves are great at fighting and move around with ease. Dodge rolling is for quick corrections, outmaneuvering in close range combat, or just getting space when you otherwise couldn't. If there's any big shortcomings of the dualies, it's being challenged at long range, both due to being outreached and moves being easier to read over great distances. A splatling that's ready with a charge isn't going to care how many times you roll. It's going to adjust its aim and still hit you. If the dualies just aren't coming naturally, practice against splatter shots. That's one of the easiest ways to learn what sets them apart and makes them special. Splatter shots have near identical range and play similarly, 
but are far more rigid in how they're allowed to move, and that matchup illustrates the difference perfectly. Really make no mistake, the dualies are not just one strong gun split into two weak guns. This might be the most consistently strong main weapon in the entire game due to just how many options it has at any given moment, together with having no especially bad traits. Its sub-weapon is Burst Bomb! If there's one word to describe the Splat Dualies kit, it's movement. It, like, it didn't have enough already! Burst Bombs instantly afford far more mobility options to whatever weapon they're on, so this thing's got it in spades! Just really anything that keeps you moving when the ink isn't going to anything else. Burst Bombs also control the movement of enemies. A great usage of this tool is to instantly cut off an escape route of an enemy, especially when they don't have a dodge roll, and you do. Of course, there's always the beautiful scenario when the enemy thinks they're gonna get away from your short range in a state of near death, but then you just plop a Burst Bomb onto their head to finish them off. In fact, Burst Bombs are just long range enough that they make for a good pressuring tool no matter what. The splash damage off the Burst Bomb is anywhere from 25 to 35, meaning it can actually reduce the number of bullets to score a kill with an indirect hit. A direct hit is 60, so that brings it down to two bullets. Using these two together lets it score very certain kills for roughly half an ink tank. Opening with a Burst Bomb makes them easier to hit. This is best when it looks like they'll easily swim away, as this is slower than shooting alone when you've got the advantage. Its special weapon is... Tenta Missiles. Hey, they had to give it something sucky to keep it from being totally overpowered, right? The Tenta Missiles don't have immediate synergy with the rest of the moveset since they demand outright hiding away from any trouble, and this is a weapon that wants to challenge foes with its adept fighting skills. It may not seem useful, but remember the targeting system and how it reveals enemy locations. When ducking out of the action when things get dicey, this can reveal a pathway back in. It identifies the position of a weapon that you think you can win against, or just disrupts the backline weapon who's got their eye on you. Oftentimes, Tenta Missiles will get chip damage and not kill. This is in good harmony with the range of the Burst Bomb. Compared to other Tenta Missile weapons, the Dualies have little trouble building them up. In all, Splat Dualies are a fun combination where the main and sub play off one another well and is all about making your foes head spin as you get the jump on them. Very few weapons have Burst Bombs, and even fewer strong weapons have them. So right away, that's a big reason to consider picking up the dualies as one of your regulars if you love that bomb type and can't get enough of it just as I do. Between the middling range, good sub-weapon, and good main weapon, I recommend this as a good weapon for beginners to learn general game sense. This is a well-rounded kit that's not particularly bad at many maps or modes. It's a nice, safe choice when the rotation doesn't make it clear what to choose. For a first-time ability recommendation, Quick Respawn gets a quick explanation. That's a stackable ability that reduces respawn time as long as the user is not on their first life and has not scored any kills on their current life. Dualies fight a lot and thus die a lot. That's why I'm recommending. I've chosen to save main power up for last because I'm so excited that the effect is damage up! It's no secret that whenever main power up increases damage, those are the weapons that it's best on. I want to state up front right now that on no weapon does main power up reduce the minimum number of hits in order to splat, but it is possible to make a weapon do 99.9 .9 damage in one fewer attack, and if the enemy has spent one frame in enemy ink, that's a kill. For the splat dualies, two mains and two subs is optimal for bridging the damage from an indirect burst bomb and two bullets into a state of near death. For abilities, I want to debunk run speed up as a good option. There's nothing wrong with using it if the goal is better strafing, but the dodge roll is unaffected due to it counting as an attack. Similarly, Ink Saver Main does nothing to reduce the cost of a dodge. Now, would you believe me if I told you that the next weapon kit we have coming up is actually more popular than this one? I hope so, because everyone should get used to the name of N. Perry Splat Dooleys. Stats are identical, of course, aside from the high special charge. Its sub is the Curling Bomb, as if anyone would think that the vanilla set wasn't going to get matched by mobility. While the vanilla excels at stages with verticality and obstacles, this one specializes in flat stages and long straightaways. The Curling Bomb gets the whole team to the center of the map quickly at the start of many fights, enabling them to take map control before the other team can even get there. Carrying this into flat stages might as well mean free points at the start of a ranked battle. After the first push is over, it's a tool for approaching or distraction, whichever the situation reads for. Swim behind it and set up for an otherwise impossible shot, or don't. Beyond even that, the dodge roll enables it to play even more games, dodging out of the way while they're shooting at the curling bomb. A curling bomb is probably not always going to hit a target, but say it does manage to. 
On the occasion, contact chip damage is 20 while splash damage is 30. Either way, if the curling bomb happens to nick them, it's a nice bonus that enables the end parry to three shot kill. Between the sub weapon, the dodge roll, and then being a middleweight, this thing gets all over the map in no time flat. And to make the end parry truly a weapon for all situations, it's special as Inkjet. Inkjet is a potentially powerful special that gets it out of the way of stingrays and enables it to challenge at longer range than otherwise possible. Since being outreached is typically the weakest point of the duelies, this does so much to lessen that shortcoming. Get up high to be hard to hit and suppress the backlines. I still think the end parry duelies are weak to splatlings, but this rounds out the set well, making it able to challenge virtually anything else. End parries are tied for having the highest charge of any inkjet, but this isn't without reason. Once ejecting, the end parries have a full reload to dodge roll twice after landing every single time, letting them a good fighting chance against those camping the marker. Inkjet lovers might prefer other choices, and that's understandable, but this still manages to be a decent choice for it despite the high cost. As for the maps, we've already talked about flat stages being great, but I want to bring attention to Schellendorf Institute. This is a map that normally favors longer range weapons, but the end parries being able to get to the center of the map quickly and it making it very difficult for the foes to approach without making themselves obvious makes this a good choice for this weapon as well. The curling bomb raises usefulness in Rainmaker pushes, while the inkjet is good at pushes in any other mode. If your personal taste prioritizes constant movement and high kill counts, consider learning the end parry duelies. Here's the equipment recommendations. Main power up is still good and should be worth considering, but it's not able to bridge the damage gap quite as well as you could with burst bombs, as burst bombs can hit for 35 in direct while curling bombs only hit for 30. Let's give it up for kit number three, the Kenza Splat Duelies. So you follow the naming scheme and your brother d Well, same stats. And to get started on this one, you ever have those situations where you want to initiate a duel, but they have such an easy way to swim away and space you out? Well, the answer is suction bombs, and this makes the Kenza Duelies probably the most tactical duelie option right off the bat. Throwing a suction bomb almost outright stops the enemy from going a given way for two whole seconds, and that's an eternity to approach them and make them fight you. Use it on escape routes, or on terrain that could otherwise be used to play the range game against you, then approach with a dodge roll to turn off shot RNG. In fact, it's pretty common for a squid to knee-jerk react to duelies and immediately just swim backwards. A lot of people hate fighting them and might just run into the bomb if they didn't see it get thrown. On the flip side, it's, yep, your spacing tool as well. Beyond just blocking an enemy's way out, it blocks their buddy's way in and turns a 2v1 into an easy 1v1. Another angle on this is using the showy nature of the main weapon to bait them into a suction bomb. Due to the annoying nature, people want to run right at it and they'll go straight into out of sight suction bombs. This is a very solid combination for the duelies, but is very ink hungry at the same time. Keep that in mind as this is one of the most expensive sub weapons, plus your guns and dodge roll are using ink up at the same time. Its special weapon is Baller! I guess you could say this is rounding out the kit! Well this one certainly ditches mobility. That's not a bad thing either. The other ones might be more mobile, but this one's all about aggression and tactics. Baller is what makes or breaks a push in Clan Blitz, or just locks in foes to an explosion. It's yet another easy way to kill, and it comes around decently often. Ballers are poor at following enemies into their own ink as they'll just simply swim away from it, but thanks to the suction bomb, that's not always a worry. This is the second most expensive baller in the game, and while the Kenza's not quite as good at turfing as its brothers, it's still decent. The baller's ink explosion leaves the user vulnerable, and the suction bomb plays off this well thanks to the free reload, buying it a stop button. The whole package loses out on the trademark Duelium ability and guzzles loads more ink, but it makes up for it by being extremely oriented toward fighting. This weapon is a good pick for all modes, but is easiest to recommend in splat zones and clam blitz due to having a sub and special that can hold an area for a sustained period of time, and of course, being able to fight well along with having a baller as that shows up on almost every team in clam blitz. Moving on to equipment, when I say the ink cost is high, I mean the ink cost is high. Saving ink should be the top priority, and ink saver sub is the best way to do it. Between the suction bomb and two dodge rolls alone, that's already 88% of the maximum ink supply and barely anything left over for bullets. If that roll is not being used often enough in fights for this to be a problem, you're either fighting someone who can't aim or not using the weapon right. In other words, something's wrong.
Where are we gonna be dueling this time? See what I did there? It's Off The Hook Live, coming at you live from Inkopolis Square. Our Manta Maria, that's our first repeat, and Starfish Main Stage. This stage is really close to the ocean. You should go for a swim, Marina. I'm not falling for that again. Oh! Does that mean Pearl has canonically killed Marina? I knew she looked evil. That forehead and eyebrows cannot be trusted. I'm a contestant hopeful to climb the aggro crag with my office shoes on. They clash a lot with the outfit. I decided to go with the vanilla splat duelies today. Off we go. The Manta Maria is our first battlefield for today. First time the, <laughs> the squid kid picking his nose there was great. Oh my God, Callie? And you're hanging out with Pearl? Oh my God, spoilers. We've already solved the problem of the story. So I decided to go with the vanilla here today because we're playing in Turf Wars. I like the painting ability of the Tenna Missiles and also the tracking that they provide is just nice for what a decentralized mode this is. I like that a lot. Plus, you don't get a chance to play Burst Bomb weapons that often and I passed it up when we were playing with the uh, regular, um, with the regular splatter shot to play the Tenna Tech. So I, what? Oh, it was the ink <laughs> I thought, okay, I knew that the blob blobber was there and I thought the blob blobber killed me because the bubbles were right on me, but I was like, what? That shouldn't have done that much. Wow, they're pushing us back. If this goes anything like my last game on this map, though, we'll turn it around because now we're the other team. Uh, that guy sustained heavy damage. Come on. Come on, you can't, you can't be hanging out there, man. What if I had more ink? I Damn, Callie, you're a bitch. <laughs> Also, she had bones on her head. What has she been up to exactly? You're going around, like, finding corpses and then wearing them on your head? No wonder Marie left you. Uh, and is worried, sick about- Oh my god, really? This guy is in our base. Do we have a- I'm watching to see if our splatter shed- Okay, no, we- our custom junior is not disconnected. We just suck. Freaking squiffers! I have not built up my special ones. I have thrown my life away every single life. Let's prioritize survivability. Let's stop- being like that. I needed a dodge roll more. Let's just freaking do it. Good! Okay, obliterated. Gotcha. Turned into a nice little turret right there. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, God. Uh, suction bombs. Oh, no, 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 no. Going into the map a bit more, the big thing that I think sets apart the, the uh, Manta Maria from all the others, with such a mobile weapon, there's so many ways of getting into center. I can go over there and jump, I can just swim straight in through that pathway, I could go off to the side and come in through that. There's many different pathways, you're seeing just three of them right here, but there's all sorts of little boxes and little bits of terrain that all fit in well. Gotcha. Oh, uh, nope. Okay, I guess yes. I was still on a pretty good killing spree right there, that wasn't too bad. I tend to favor the side. I'm not sure exactly why that is or if it is the best way to go, but I just sort of like flanking people who think they can come into our base that way. So we gotta take back center. We got a few seconds to do it. I saw somebody moving around. Uh, the Octobrush is going that way. Um, I gotta build up my special one bad. If we're gonna take back control, we need to like stop them from moving for a little bit. Okay, pop that. Didn't break it. Come on. Get rid of that. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Good. Use my high accuracy. Whoop! Maybe? Perhaps? We colored in a lot of the center. Maybe. Maybe. Do we get to be the team that did the did the thing? Yeah! All right, I played kind of crappy in the first half, but I played good in the second half, and that's all that counts in Turf Wars and in uh, romance. Speaking from experience here, you'll, you'll understand one day. I got my two mains and two subs of main power up on me right now, which seems pretty good. Starfish main stage. A map that I kind of have an awkward relationship with. Okay, uh, let me let me explain what I mean. So there was a certain map that I was a big fan of. Are you guys coming or not? Uh, here, let, let's give them a booyah to get their rears in gear, okay? We started off on the wrong foot. I didn't booyah. You guys, you, you couldn't believe in me as a teammate. I understand. Let's get it together. Let's perform now that it really counts. Anyway, 
there's a certain stage that I was a quite big fan of, known as Snapper, uh, Snapper, uh, yeah, Snapper Canal. Oh, no, Snapper. Uh, Flounder Heights. How did I say Snapper Canal twice? Flounder Heights was one of my favorite previous stages. Now, a lot of the stages from Splatoon 2, it is no secret, they come from Splatoon 1, just with a few little improvements or new gimmicks added in. And that's fine. I'm perfectly okay with that. I think that a lot of the stages in 1 were good, aside from, uh, you know, one that they chose to bring back at launch, but hey. Um... And I kept hoping that I would get my Flounder Heights back, just because it was my one of my favorite stages in the first game. I think it was my second favorite. Um, loved that stage to death. Problem. It was in the game's code frequently, and they even would update it over time, yet they kept not bringing it back, even though it was partially in the code and people were able to access the data for it. My suspicion for why that happened is this stage. It's quite similar where it's got these two towers on either side of May and just further apart. Um, the way that kind of leads into it, the way the fact that it's a wider map. I've always felt like the terrain here is that one, but I just don't like it quite as much. It is a map where you get some high vantage points from center and you can paint it quite safely. I don't know if I'd quite call this a sniper-centric map. It does have that going on back there. Oh yeah, used all three parts together, or at least uh, two of them. Uh, let's hit the uh, Nautilus over there. Feeling awfully naughty. Oh, you're activating your special. You're feeling really naughty, I see. Might as well call him Naughty More, not Naughty Less. And over there, you got you. I saw you. Oh, you're going over there. Okay, you're going across the water. How was that guy still alive? He was right on that guy's ass and not shooting him, or at least not hitting him. And then I just stroll up and I'm like, oh, hey, buddy, what's up? Uh, hit you. Okay. Let's cover that up. Oh, no. No, you're not going to get me. I'm going to get you! Ha <laughs> ha! For me complaining about this special not working all that well with the main weapon, I'm sure finding ways to make it work. Good. Went into my turret mode. Ba -da 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 -da. And then, okay. Uh, their sniper is back there. Nope, not gonna get you today. Oh well. At least I can protect my buddy! Okay, good, he survived. Thanks to my painting around his feet on the way back in. I have not really needed a super jump in, despite the fact that I dedicated a slot to quick super jump. I guess in some games it won't do anything for you. I am playing in Little Baby Turf Wars after all. Pow! There's no way we lost that. We curb stomped him. I was playing pretty well. I contributed. I tracked my t I tracked my uh, enemies. Helped out my teammates. Got some assists. Like I did pretty well. I threw my I threw my bombs at good times. I'm happy with that match. Six kills. And yeah, they didn't have any disconnects. Their sniper still got some people. Yeah, that was quite good. Uh, I'd like to get a piece of the aggro crag for myself one day. I always wanted to own one. God, it looks like I'm... It looks like I have a crush on this girl and she doesn't know I exist. And uh, that other squid in the picture is her boyfriend or something. Next time on Splatoon 2, we're going to be moving on from what ails us and learning about... I'd say it's the closest thing you get to a shotgun from another shooter. Yeah, I'd say that. See you guys then!